Hi, welcome to Homeschooling in Progress. I'm Christy, and in this video, I'm going to show you some fun hands on learning activities that are perfect for your preschoolers and kindergartners to do in the winter. This first activity I'm showing is an alphabet activity, and it simply uses a recording sheet. And here are some letter cards that you could use for the lowercase or uppercase letters. And you can match them using little mini erasers or gems to cover up the letters you find. Or you can utilize a sensory bin, which makes it even more fun. Put some puzzle letters in there and have your little ones find them and just simply put them onto the recording paper. It's a really fun way to practice matching uppercase to lowercase letters in a fun hands-on way. This next activity focuses on matching beginning sounds with the letters that make those sounds. And it uses a fun winter theme of letters that are on mittens. There's an uppercase letter on one mitten and lowercase letters on the other mitten. And a bunch of objects that begin with those letters on top of winter hats. So here your preschooler or kindergartner can pick a picture. Here we picked the hat and then they can find the matching letters on the mittens that make that sound. So they'll look for the capital H on one mitten and the lowercase h on another. This is a great activity to um, be able to have your preschooler working on their level. You can have just a few letters to choose from. You can have all of them. You can put it in a sensory bin as well or just have it in a basket to work on. This next winter literacy activity also uses some fine motor skills. Here, my kindergartner is forming lowercase letters using some letter cards in a salt tray. And to make this salt blue, we just took some white table salt, put it in a baggie with food coloring, shook it up, and then let it dry on a plate for a little while. And he's using a little cotton swab with it, holding it like a pencil. And this can be used for lowercase letters, uppercase letters, the set here that he's working with is laminated so that dry erase markers could be used on it. You could also use those little mini erasers to form the letters. And you can see there's a little hole in the upper corner. I like to hole punch each of them and then combine them with the book ring to keep the sets together. Here's another activity that develops fine motor skills. It's a pen poking activity. And my kindergartner is using a giant push pin to go around the winter object, poking holes where each of the dots are. It's a great activity for forcing kids to really slow down and pay attention to what they're doing. If you don't trust your kids with a push pin, you certainly can make it a connect the dot activity with the pencil instead. This next activity shows one of my favorite materials for using with preschoolers and kindergartners, and that's Play-Doh. Play-Doh is so versatile and kids love using it. They love playing with it and it's such a great learning tool as well. Play-Doh helps kids develop their muscle strength and their little hands and that those muscles are what they're going to use when they are writing or cutting. And so it's really good when they're young to use Play-Doh or other materials like this to strengthen their hands before they start holding pencils or worrying about writing. And in, you know, there are so many ways that you can use Play-Doh. Kids can roll it into snakes to form letters or numbers. They can roll it into different shapes. In this activity here, I have uh, some different cards of pictures of winter objects, and the kids can just roll up the Play-Doh and cover the objects. Um, they can use them as counting activities. They can roll Play-Doh into little balls and use it to, for numbers. Roll some dice and, and, and roll up that many balls of Play-Doh and count them up. So lots of really fun ways that kids can use Play-Doh and use it as a learning tool. Here we're using some homemade Play-Doh. My little guy and I love making up a new batch about every month or so and we'll make some fun colors. Here we have winter colors that we thought would be fun with some blue and green, purple, and, and just leaving some of it white to use for snow. And you can certainly use store-bought Play-Doh as well, which is fine. 
Um, we just prefer the hand, the homemade stuff, but um, it's just a really fun learning tool for kids to use. And also in these cards, you can see underneath the picture that we have the words written out. And so kids can also um, write over that and practice their handwriting of forming letters as well. And I'm just using a little sheet protector here that I found at the dollar store. And, or you can laminate card, the cards as well, and then they can be used over and over again by your little ones. Before I share this activity, I'd like to let you know that all of the activities that you see here in this video can be found in my online store. I'll leave a link in the description below, but I have two different products that these activities are coming from. One is a product of winter themed fine motor activities. And the other one is winter themed math and literacy activities. The fine motor activities come with nine different activities while the math and literacy have 11 different activities in them. And I also have a bundle of them at a discount for all 20 of the activities that you can find through a link in the description below. Now for this activity that I'm showing here, I have some hot cocoa cards for numbers one through 10. And then I have some different ways to represent those numbers through the marshmallows. And there are cards, uh, marshmallow cards for the number words, for tally marks, for cubes, counting fingers, and then also the dominoes like I'm showing here. And these are all different ways that you can represent the number five using this one as an example. And if you didn't want to use the marshmallow cards or you wanted to further learning, kids can also uh, use actual objects to count to show the number. So you could use the little white gems like I have here and use that to count for how many, uh, you know, pretend like they're marshmallows to show. You could use actual marshmallows, white pom-poms. Um, kids could even use little balls of Play-Doh that they roll, and that can you be using another skill of uh, the fine motor. And so the kids can show it with the manipulatives, or there are also some little marshmallow cards that you could cut out um, that are just little blank marshmallows that kids can also use for counting as well. They can also just use the cards by themselves to put in numerical order. This next activity is another math activity, this time comparing numbers. You can see I took the recording sheet and slid it into another plastic pocket page, page protector. I found these at the dollar store and they're great for being able to use dry erase markers with so kids can actually write on them or you can also laminate the cards as well um, if you have laminate if you have a laminator. Otherwise, you could just use the little pockets here and kids can pull two cards of uh, two number cards to compare the numbers and then they can use manipulatives like the mini erasers I have here. They could use pom poms, uh, the little gems that are found in craft areas. They could roll up balls of Play-Doh or even just use the dry erase markers to draw circles to show the number, to show how. Instead of using the number cards, you could have kids roll dice instead. Uh, if they roll two dice, they can put one number in each box and represent that instead. Um, that's a really great way if your kids aren't able to count much higher than six. They can easily just do that until they're able to use the cards. You could also use little numbers that come with puzzles or the little magnetic numbers that go on the fridge. You could use those instead as well. You could put the numbers into a sensory bin and have the kids pull them out. And that just you know uses more fine motor skills. Um, the number cards can also be used to put numbers in order. Or kids, you can put a few of the numbers cards out and then the kids have to use the erasers to show how many underneath. So they could put one eraser under the number one card, two under the number two card, and so on. So it's a great way to use the cards in different ways for different activities. 
This last activity that I'm going to share is another math activity, and this one works with non-standard measurement. There are 10 different snowman cards and a snowball ruler, and the kids can line up the ruler and count how many snowballs high each snowman is, and then mark the answer that they get on the recording sheet. And they can use the snowball ruler, they can use other manipulatives instead, they can um, use the gems to put on to see how many gems high or how many linking cubes, um, pom poms, any other kind of manipulative that you have that you want them to use instead of the ruler. They can line up the snowmen from smallest to tallest. So lots of different ways they can use this set of cards for measurement activities. Again, you can find all of these in the description below. Thanks for watching and happy homeschooling.